So what is the first thing we want to do? So we are going to have a game which allows for two different ways to play. Either players can play with each other or they can one player with a computer. So the user needs to select, the player needs to select this right up front. Now to do the selection, before this game, before this board comes up, let's put that selection up here. So right in the beginning, we do not want the board to show up. On the when green flag clicked, we are going to hide the board and we are going to do it for all the components. So once we have done it for all, all of them, we have a nice blank screen to start with. And now creating a costume. So created a new sprite and called it computer versus player. Uh, we want to show this sprite as we start the game. So let's use the event when green flag clicked. So when green flag clicked, we want to show this. We're calling the backdrop, the empty backdrop we're just calling it selection. So when backdrop switches to selection, we want it to be positioned here and we want it to be visible. All right, now the second sprite we have created is, it says player versus player. And similarly, when the green flag is clicked, we want to show it. And the position is slightly off so I'm going to take the new position so now when the user chooses which one it is so right now it is player versus player now one of the things which and I've seen children get really puzzled about this so I'm sure you're wondering how are you going to go know inside the game that which one is it selected? So if you just think over this, if there's anything which you want to remember, it means you have to store that weight data somewhere. And the one thing which you have learned so far to store data is in variables. If that's what you thought, bang on, right? It is variables. So we are going to create a variable. So we're going to go to variable and we are going to create obviously a global variable that is for all the sprites and we're going to call it, let's call it game mode. And now we can choose what do we want to store in this variable. So we can either store values like 0 and 1 that is like you know a switch it's either on or off and you can decide what happens when it is on or just to make it simpler you can also store something in English which helps you know what it is what it does so we are going to take this now when do we want to store this when we click on this so when this sprite is clicked with sprite the two player sprite so what do we want to store in this variable we want to set the variable game mode to player to player p2p hmm? how about that yeah and similarly now for computer versus player Similarly, we're going to take when this sprite is clicked and we're going to set the variable game mode to computer versus player. 
CP. So it is P2P, player to player, or C2P, computer to player. So game mode is something which is gonna help define everything. And now once the sprite is clicked, we don't need the selection anymore on the screen. So what we can do is we can just hide this. Right. And after hiding, we want to show the board and we want to show all these. So let's just use a broadcast message. Start game. Yeah. So same thing here. We are going to hide and we are going to broadcast the same event. Start game. Now what we have to do everywhere we had when green flag clicked and show and do stuff instead we are going to have when I receive start game that is when we want it to show and we are going to have to do this everywhere we are going to replace everywhere that when I receive start game set the position and show it so just spend next few minutes doing this and make sure you test that it works so what we want to do is when we start the game this should show up and we click on this game mode should be computer to player and both of these should get hidden so that means the two conditions in which this should get hidden one is when the sprite is clicked and the other event is when I receive start game. Even at that time, I have to hide myself. So I'm going to copy paste. Right? So when I say player versus player, it is P2P and see they both are hidden. And we see the board, we don't see all of the costumes because we haven't done the coding yet. We're going to do it. So we play it again. Computer to player. Yeah. So we've got this piece working. Let's look at what are the main differences between the two game modes. So when we're doing player versus player, Every marker the player is allowed to make. So basically our entire code right now works absolutely well for the player to player mode. Now if this is a computer mode, computer was player mode, what will be the main difference? Now the key difference would be that say the computer, say the computers playing the X. Okay. So when player X, at that time, the user does not get to click. The mark has to happen, has to be played by the computer. And only alternatively, the user gets to play. That is when the player turn is the second mark. So in this marker, the computer gets to play. So that is the first key difference. In terms of coding, the second main difference is that the computer needs to calculate where to mark. Right. So that means if I am playing computer versus player and say the computer put in the first mark here and now the, the player potentially can put a mark in any of these locations so suppose the player plays this location so now the computer has to build a logic to check that based on where the player has marked where should the x the next x be placed so it has potential 
how many places this one any of these any of these now this is the next interesting and tricky thing we have to make sure that we are able to diagnose we are able to identify that this is a possible winning position therefore x has to be marked here so that means that every move the first thing the coding logic should check if there is a possible winning position for the player <laughs> 